Hello and a warm welcome to Join News Prime, live from our studio here in Kokomlemi, Accra. We are live on DSTV Channel 421, GoTV Channel 125, and around the world on myjoyonline.com. Coming up, aggrieved customers of the different Gold Coast Fund Management Company to pass the night at the Ministry of Finance to demand their locked up funds. <laughs> Education Minister Cecilia Abinada Pa faces criminal charges for, their, for her failing to declare her income and properties. We have details as Cecilia Dapa also applies to the court seeking to stop the OSP from investigating her for corruption related offenses and to have her seized monies returned. Now, she went viral after an interview with Joe News at the Occupy Jolobi House uh, protest three weeks ago, 48 hours after she lost her job. We bring you a story of Nasiba Bawa who says there is always a price to pay for speaking out. If it's because of it, fair enough, there's always a price to pay for everything. My uncle will tell me that I went to a protest and there is a price to pay for everything. And this that's is your price. Told and that's okay. And later, life comes to a standstill in the Ago Bledoki community in the Along constituency of the Volta region following spillage of the Akosombo Dam. This is another thing starting but coming every season. And, uh, and uh, from June, that way it's come. When it's come like this, the, our schools are, have been closed. Now, aggrieved customers of the different Gold Coast Fund Management Company are set to pass the night at the Ministry of Finance to demand their locked up funds. According to the customers, they cannot understand why their investment remains unpaid after Parliament approved allocations for a bailout. They have abandoned the comfort of their bed for the next 48 hours to press home their demand. My colleague, Kwesi Adai Kwating, spent some time with the protesters early in the day and father's report. Customers of the Defund Gold Coast Fund Management Company are emotional. For four years, they have been eagerly waiting for government to pay them their investment. They have besieged the premises of the Ministry of Finance and have promised to pass the night there. To vent their frustration, some rolled on the hot asphalt, defying the scorching sun. These affected customers say they are suffering the impact of the government's banking sector cleanup, which led to the revocation of the license of the Dr. Papakwisi Indum owned defunct Gold Coast Fund Management Company. In 2019, the aggrieved customers say they are yet to receive their investment despite the bailout allocation approved by Parliament. Charles Nyami, the convener of the group, says. The members will protest for 48 hours. We are here today to demand our immediate payment from the finance ministry. Since they claim that those monies have been spent, they have to give us the money right here because they have created bank accounts for all these customers standing here across the various branches of the uh, uh, commercial banks. And therefore, we, uh, we expect them to advance money to the commercial banks for them to credit our accounts within these 48 hours that we are going to tarry here. Then we live here we don't expect the government and the finance ministry to be so insensitive as to the point as we have exposed them look at the ages of these people standing right here they are above 60 70 80 and if the government will be so sensitive enough to watch on for these people to tarry within the weather scorched by the sun and stand in the dew for the 48 hours, it would deepen their insensitiveness to the whole world. Joy is 85 years old. At this age, she is supposed to be resting in a house, but she's standing in the scorching sun, demanding her locked up fund. She tells Joy News she retired 23 years ago after working for 30 years in the civil service, but she cannot enjoy her retirement because her benefits have been locked up for the past four years. I retired 23 years ago. Having worked over 30 years, I expected to enjoy my retirement. So all the money I had, I invested. Let them release our money. That's all. So that it isn't the government's money. It is my money that I have worked and earned. So at least for them, the government you see that some of us, those who were civil servants, how much were we being paid? So all that we had, we had to invest 
to be able to earn something. The interest at least we could enjoy. Interest though, principal. main principal though, are max. Other aggrieved customers narrated how they have been reduced to beggars to make ends meet. Many say they cannot afford the basic necessities of life because their lifetime savings have been locked up. We have to go outside, beg sometimes maybe our friends, we call them, no, we don't have money, give us something little, even school fees, but we can't even pay. Now one exercise book is 10 CD, first is 2 CD, why? One notebook is 50 CD, why? Just a notebook for a child who is in class 5, why? 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 Even the school fees for me. Eh, it should release the money. It should release the money. But please, we are appealing to government to pay us because our members are dying. Me, for instance, I have to go through hardship. It's not easy. Very difficult. Very, very difficult because I have to force my pension at 55, which I don't suppose to do that. I plan to enjoy life after working at the mines. So please, we are appealing to the government to see to the finance minister release the remaining, the 5.7 billion that he still would finance minister, he should release it for us, please. The aggrieved customers say until the government responds to their demands, they will continue to pick it. Now let's cross over to the finance ministry where my colleague Maxwell Agbaba is standing by with the latest on the protesters. My, uh, Max, what's happening? Uh, Brace, um, the protesters, um, the aggrieved customers of the, the fund, Good Coast Fund Management, are still picketing um, the finance ministry. Um, in fact, this protest, like you already mentioned, already saw on the television, started in the morning, and uh, the aggrieved customers are still here. Now, the group says that 8.6 billion Ghana cities approved by parliament to settle their members um, is yet to get to its members. And um, they are demanding the disbursement of their locked up funds. We'll be speaking to the convener um, shortly. But what you can see um, right now are um, the customers who've been picketing the finance ministry since morning. Let's just show you around before we interact with the, um, with the customers. What you can see um, is a police vehicle that has been stationed here um, just about 10 minutes ago. Um, the change shift, there was a team of police officers um, here. They were here since morning and they've left. And then there's a new team here making sure that there is order here at the finance ministry. So this is the finance ministry um, behind me. Um, it's empty, the compound is empty, of course, because work has closed um, for today. But the grief customers are saying that they and the customers are saying that they are not leaving this premises. They are picketing um, for 48 hours and until they get their money, they are not leaving here. You can see some of them um, lie down there. Uh, you can see um, packs of what they had earlier um, today some of them sleeping, in fact, dozen of on the hard concrete um, floor. So these are packs of food that they ate earlier um, in the day. They really came prepared. Um, at the other side, you can see some mobile toilets. They brought saying that they're going to stay here for 48 hours, demanding payment from the um, finance. Let me go outside and speak. Or the group. Thank you, sir. You are live enjoying this. Thank you. Thank you. You are the convener for the aggrieved customers of Gold Coast Fund Management. Okay. Tell me, why are you here this evening? We are here for our locked up funds, which has been for over five years. That's since 2018. And approval has been made by the Parliament House. and. Uh, the, 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 the monies have been raised by the finance ministry through budgets and document available shows that the finance minister claims that our money approved by parliament for our payment has been expended. Meanwhile, the money was not used to pay us. And we have had 
over 800 of our old people among our customers dead and gone within the space of these five years. So how can we sit in our various homes whilst our money is sitting in the pocket of the finance minister? He should come out and account for that 8.6 billion. Whom and who and who that he paid the money to and how he disbursed the money. Because as we as we, we as it stands now, we have not received our full payment. We have left with over uh, 61,000 of our members who are yet to be paid in full. So that's the situation. Earlier you were telling me about some of your members who you are saying have died as a result of this? Yes, a lot of them. Over 800. Over 800. We have evidence of their obituaries. But you see, it's difficult to display someone's family member obituary in, 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 in space like this. That's why we couldn't bring them. But if we got the permission, we, we get the permission, we can display all of them over 800. So, before I speak to you, I speak. You, so you're saying you're not living here? You, you pick it in this place for 48 hours. 48 hours. We're yeah. we gonna sleep. Here. Yeah, we are. We are sleeping here. We are going to sleep here. We are going to sleep. Um, hi, hi, but we like on joining. Yes. I'm watching. Yes. My name is Rosemond Bredisky. Rosemond. Yes. Okay. Um, wait, what are you showing me? Mosquito Those repellent. My face, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping here tonight. Okay. Yeah. So I have my everything here because we want to collect our money in full. Five years is not easy, and we are dying. We can't even pay our children's school fees. And then my husband is a pensioner. Somebody who worked with Anglo Gold for 35 years and everything is locked up. So we are sleeping here. We want our full pay. Because already the, the minister made to note the, to the Ghanaians that they have paid all the depositors and we haven't received our money. So we are here to collect our money. Have you been here since morning? Yes, yeah, since morning. Um, have you seen the finance minister? No. Uh, has no. anyone addressed you? No. They called us for a meeting. We went there, we went to the room. We sat there, we waited for them. They weren't coming, they came, they sent us to the reception. We sat there about 45 minutes, nothing, and we walk out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for talking to us. You are welcome. Okay. So, Brace, um, so Brace um, that's it. Um, the members here are saying that they're not going to leave um, until they are paid their money. They said they'll be picketing the finance ministry um, for 48 hours. So, as you can see in the background, another police vehicle just joined. It looks like the police will be compelled to also keep vigil uh, with the grief customers of the Good Coast Fund Management. So from the Finance Ministry, um, here in Accra, over to you, Brace in the studio. Um, uh, young, or oh, oh, I mean older people like that, picketing the ministry as at this time, they promised to sleep there uh, at the ministry to drum home their demands. Let's see how the government responds. But we've been joined on, on Zoom by Dr. Rich Monetia, a banking consultant with some perspectives on this burning issue. Grateful for you to join us here. Now, government says it has spent over 25 billion city on the financial sector cleanup. Um, so what explains how some people still have their funds not paid? I think, thank you very much, Brace. And give me an opportunity to speak on this issue you know it is very very sad that the finance minister will say i've spent 25 billion you see and nobody is asking him where did this money goes it's very unfortunate and we have a whole parliament which are supposed to look at the accountability and this thing has been led the the, the finance, finance minister at times say that 21 at times say 25 and which one do we take and we have a whole parliament who are responsible for these things. And you heard one of them saying that parliament says they have approved it. But why has parliament not asked for a detailed report of how these monies were disbursed? You know, what we see today, some people also have the same issues, even with the fund banks that they said they have paid. The money has been blocked by a certain group of people calling themselves the SEC or whatever were we, where they put unnecessary impediment on people receiving their money. So I believe that it is hard time the minister is called to parliament 
to state one by one. Because you see, we, we talk about figures, but he does not give us the detailed expense of the money. Mm. So I'm not surprised the people are complaining that it's been approved. And nobody, it's five years now on the line, nobody is talking about it. Mm. And mm. we leave it as it is, and it's been going on as like that. Okay. And I believe that this minister should be called to parliament to give a detailed of how much went here, how much that went there, so that people can know the money has been paid. Mm. And but as I was talking to us earlier, discussing with you, I have even experienced with people I know very well who are on the banking cleanup, who still have some money locked up in some of the banks that are supposed to. If you go there, they said some stack, stack or somebody has blocked it. Okay. okay. You go round and round and round and round. You go round, they will send you to the register general. They send you to the uh, the liquidator, and nobody seems to understand or know. So, 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 if, if that is the case, and the funds have been locked up somewhere, you mentioned SEC. What must happen in terms of getting the funds of these customers paid? It comes under the the the, the, the whole regulation system. The Minister of Finance is the umbrella, is the holding umbrella. Hmm. So he should come back and give us the detail how much money has been disbursed and what what went there, what went here. Unfortunately, anytime they speak, they always spend 25 billion. We spend 21 billion. But nobody, and let me repeat, nobody has asked for accountability. Where did this money go and who got what and what? Okay. The man speaks and he got away with it. Mm, okay. And I believe the parliament should rise up to the occasion because we, can, we always have people slipping out for their own money okay I mean, right, in which country can this thing mm. happen no, doc, you, I'm take, grateful you to you. put your money in investment mm. i'm grateful to you for you joining take us. your money doc, dr rich monetary is a banking consultant there now there's fresh trouble for the embattled former sanitation minister cecilia dapa after the special prosecutor charged her with a criminal offense of failing to declare her income and properties as requested by the lawful officers of the office of the special prosecutor the osp is currently in court seeking to confirm the seizure of millions of cities seized from cecilia dapers residence when the house was searched even as both parties ready themselves to battle it out in court on that matter the special prosecutor has formally charged the former minister with a criminal offense meanwhile cecilia dapa has also filed an application in the high court seeking to stop the osp from investigating her for corruption related offense and to have her seized monies returned Richard Kwajonyaku of our Legal Affairs Desk has joined me on Zoom with details. Kwajo, run us through this latest criminal charge against Cecilia Dapa and the fact of this charge. Well, so, um, Grace, um, the fact indicates that Madame Cecilia Dapa is under investigation by the Office of the Special Prosecutor for corruption and corruption related offenses, including using public office for profits in respect of suspected tainted large cash sums reportedly stolen from her residential premises and also retrieved from the same house by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. In fact, the fact goes on to say that the evidence uh, will establish that on 24 July 2023, the Special Prosecutor, in the performance of his function, served on the accused and noticed to declare her property and income under Regulation 21. And such forms, um, according to the first schedule, of the Office of the Special Prosecutor has not been returned by Madam Cecilia Dapa. The accused, that is Madam Cecilia Dapa, was duly notified as per the statutory forms and by a cover letter under the seal of the Office of the Special Prosecutor and the seal and mark of the Special Prosecutor that she was required by law to make the specified declarations and return same to the Office of the Special Prosecutor per form 12 of the first schedule of um, the OSP at within 30 days of service on her of the notice. As at the close of business on 5th October 2023, the accused, that is Madam Zisladapa, had woefully failed without lawful excuse to return the duly completed statutory forms to the Office of the Special Prosecutor more than 30 days after the service of the notice and the forms on her. Mm. Now, we also understand Zisladapa has filed an application seeking to stop the OSB from investigating her for corruption-related offences and to have her seize the monies returned. Tell us the basis of the suit. Well, so uh, there are three reliefs that she is seeking. Um, a declaration that uh, the OSP's 
re-seizure of the money initially seized from the home of Madam Cecilia Dapa on the 24th of July 2023 and the refreezing of uh, Madam Cecilia Dapa's bank account respectively on 5th September 2023 is unfair, unreasonable, capricious, arbitrary, and ultra virus, uh, the OSP statutory powers. In fact, the second one goes on to say that she is seeking an order for the OSP to release the money received on the 5th of September 2023 to the Madam Cecilia Pai and to unfreeze her bank account. And the final one she is seeking is an order prohibiting the respondent, that is the OSP, from continuing with the investigation of the applicant for corruption or corruption related offenses, Grace. Okay, grateful to you, Richard Kodiak, who are still on legal matters. Attorney General Godfrey Ebu Adami says he is unable to recommend the prosecution of any of the persons named in the Professor Frimpong Watson report on alleged involvement of some government officials in illegal mining activities. The former chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining in recent times has been on a war path with other government officials for claiming in an official report that they were involved actively in illegal mining activities. Let's share with you part of that particular uh, report, uh, you know, that was released by the chairman now, or, or I mean by the AG. He says, quote, in the absence of any evidence on the docket in support of any of the allegations of illegal mining activities, we are unable to recommend the prosecution of any of the persons cited in a report. They should therefore be discharged. We, however, await the outcome of the investigations conducted in a case involving Seth Mante, uh, John Ofori at Oforiata and Echo Eusi, unquote. Godfrey Abouadame is the Attorney General of Ghana, and he uh, brought out this statement. Now, meanwhile, private legal practitioner Martin Pegu says he disagrees with the Attorney General's opinion that there is no evidence to support Professor Frimpong Boateng's Galamse report. Speaking on pulse with my colleague, Blessed Soga, Martin Pebu says he does not find the Attorney General's report satisfactory. The distraction to the uh, forest. I can't agree with the Attorney General that there's no evidence. No. The forest was destroyed, Cobro Forest and the other one. So the distraction that CJ Alaska, Alaska is said to have done, did it happen or not? I don't see the opinion talking about that. What I expect in respect of the destruction to the forest was that they would say they've gone to the field there, they've checked the forest out, and so they find a distraction. And if you find a distraction, the next thing is to find out who was there at certain periods that uh, Frimpon Boatin mentioned. If we find that it was CJ Alaska that went there and they didn't have the permits, you take on CJ Alaska and that's Donald Isua and his people. So I don't find the opinion satisfactory in respect of the destruction of the forest, those ones. That one, we need more work on it. So this is forensic. This is forensic. We can't sit on that evidence. We need AG to send the investigators to the forest. I didn't find any statement that the investigators went there and took pictures and they did any forensic analysis. So short of that, the AG's report, the AG's opinion is not up to scratch when it comes to that specific area of any investigations being done on the forest. To other stories now, and the chairman of the Parliamentary Ad Hoc Committee investigating the alleged plot to remove the IGP has strongly refuted allegations of bias made by the IGP's lawyers, describing them as baseless. According to Samuel Atacha, the proceedings have been recorded for reference. Hence, he does not have the capacity to tamper with the evidence. He made these comments after the in-camera hearing of the case today. Samuel Imbura has more in this report. Response from Samuel Atacha follows accusations by the IGP's legal team that he had a hidden agenda against their client due to his consistent prejudicial comments about the proceedings in public. However, Samuel Atachia condemned these assertions and indicated that the majority of Ghanaians can rather attest to his fairness in steering the committee. Uh, no allegation of bias has been made to me or the committee openly. What transpired was on Joy FM, which I heard. It is very disappointing for anybody to say I'm biased. On the contrary, the generality of Ghanaians believe that I've steered the affairs of the committee well. 
And if anybody is having GTS, then I'm going to sort of uh, manufacture evidence against the IGP. Uh, it does not occur with common sense. Because what we are doing here, with the greatest of respect, is being recorded. So attach here with, with whatever dexterity will not be able to improve upon the evidence. We have five fight, fight, finding committee, and it is being recorded and transcribed verbatim. It's a baseless allegation. Another issue that generated concerns from the legal team of the IGP was a blocking of members of the police management board who accompanied the IGP from taking part in the in-camera hearing. Samuel Atachia explains why. No, the committee felt that because we said we are doing uh, the matters in camera, you understand, it will not be fair for non-witnesses to be present. That was the thinking of the committee. What is the meaning of the in camera? Would have brought you there because you are also not going to testify. You are just, I mean, members of the I mean, press. So what is the discrimination here? But the lawyers for the IGP think the decision was high-handed. Kofi Bento, a spokesperson for the legal team. But when we went in, um, the chairman said, well, it is supposed to be in camera, and therefore uh, not everybody ought to be there. Again, out of abundance of respect for the Speaker of Parliament, for Parliament, and the committee and the chairman, Puma members agreed and excused themselves, leaving the IGP and his lawyers. It is my view that it was a compromise. But it is also my view that we should not limit state institutions to individuals. And I repeat, the IGP is not here in his personal capacity. He's here as head of police. And the proper group that manages the police is Puma. So they were properly here and they could have properly been in the room. Indeed, there will be answers that maybe the IGP will not have immediately. One of the expectations of the committee was to receive witnesses and evidence from the accusers of the IGP. However, Kofi Bento reveals there was no show. Today's processes were ended without those other witnesses, one. And then the chairman has also thrown an open invitation to the witnesses that if they have any further evidence, they should produce them tomorrow. Now, we have a, a little problem with that. If somebody has evidence tomorrow, they should know it today. And now we are being asked to come back tomorrow to come and hear what new evidence may be produced. And we're asking, how do we even address it when we get to the committee and the evidence is presented to us right there? And he says, well, we'll deal with it when we get there. This is where some of us have a problem with this whole thing. If you have to bring the head of internal security here to come and listen to his subordinates as to whether they have some evidence concerning his work. In the first place, if you are serving police officer, there is a process to use. It is not this place. All witnesses are expected to be present for the proceedings to the 10th of October, where the committee is expected to bring a closure to the issue. Samuel Mbura, Joy News, Parliament House. Still to come here on Joy News Prime, she went viral after an interview with Joy News at the Occupy Jolobi House protest three weeks ago. 48 hours after she lost her job, we bring you a story of Nasiba Bauer, who says there is always a price to pay for speaking out. Because of it, Fair enough, there's always a price to pay for everything. My uncle will tell me that you went to a protest and there is a price to pay for everything. And this that's is your price. Told you. And that's okay. Welcome back from the break. Now, a number of level 200 and 300 students of the University of Ghana face potential withdrawal from the institution due to unsatisfactory academic performance. In a letter, the university's academic affairs department instructs students at these levels with a CGPA of 1.0 to expect an official withdrawal notice from the university. We will delve into the specifics of this matter. But first, let's examine the statement issued by the university, signed by the director of academic affairs, Lydia Nyanko Dankwa. Now it says, um, uh, with reference to section 9.26 of the university regulations for junior members 2017 on receipt of grades for all registered courses for an academic year and a graduate student who do not achieve the stipulated minimum cumulative grade point average CGPA for progression to the next level of study should be withdrawn from the university. Presently, the minimum CGPA prescribed for the above listed colleges 
is 1.0. In this respect, current level, 100, level 200, level 300 students are hereby directed to review their academic performance from their online provisional transcript in their MISS web. Students who have received examination results for all 2022-2023 registered courses and obtained a CGPA below the approved minimum for their college should expect official withdrawal letters from the university via their official UG email addresses soon. For those who have already remitted their tuition fees for the 2023-2024 academic year, please be assured that a refund will be processed upon request. We recognize the significance of this announcement and extend an invitation to any student who has questions or requires support to contact the Reverend College Ad Academic Affairs Office. We appreciate your understanding and cooperation in this matter. A specific notice for College of Health Sciences will be issued in due course. Sincerely, L.A. Nyakon Dankwa, Mrs. So that's the statement from the university. We're joined via Zoom by Anis Hafa, a seasoned educationist who explored this issue further. Grateful for joining us, sir. Should a policy of immediate dismissal for poor academic performance at the tertiary levels be retained, discarded, or reconsidered? You know, the, uh, this news is quite disturbing uh, in the sense that why did we have to wait so long for young people to have reached the level of two, level 200 and 300 before we begin to see that the academic performance is in question? What the proper thing to do really is that right at from level 100, students need to know what their performances are. And that means that if we need, uh, uh, how do you call it? We need counseling, they need to know ahead of time. If they need uh, some disciplinary measures ahead of time, they need to understand it. But I don't see how we wait at the last minute and then tell them that you're not doing well. What was the administration doing all that time? You know, now basically, okay, from my experience, if your level is uh, below 2.0, then that, that calls for some kind of academic probation. And which, that, which means is that now you want to look at the courses where young people do not do well, and they have to repeat those courses to improve their GPS course. You know? So I don't know how we waited to level 300 to find out that uh, the GPA is 1.0. It really doesn't make sense to me. So, so must the rule about withdrawing student of said CGPAs be abolished? Or it must be looked at again. Okay, now let, let's do like this. We need particular uh, standards established by the schools, so that if you have, your standing is two point zero and up, that is appreciable because we can't just process people through uh, without having the uh, uh, without having the right uh, quality that we expect from them, and this comes from the uh, schools. But all I'm saying is this: I'm a parent. I have three daughters. There's no way, I, for example, as a parent, to wait for this particular thing to happen. But then, of course, I'm in education. But what I'm saying is this, for the benefit of other parents, they need to understand, students need to understand that they are being monitored and that when they are being monitored, there is some kind of referral. We want them to understand that we know the, their situation at any point in time so that we don't surprise them at the last minute that they're not doing well. What happened all that time? But anyway... The issue was this. As a parent, it's very difficult to say that you are expelling students from the school. So the issue is this. What is the colleges or the universities going to do to help these young people out? First of all, I mean, who owns the problem? That is the question. It can be partially by the students. It can be partially by the administrators too. Why wait till level 300 to now realize that a student's uh, GPA is 1.0, which is like a D. You know, below that is a fail. You know, so I think they waited too long. We have okay. to provide a service. Look, the reason why the administrators are there is to serve the best interests of the students. Okay. That's why they pay school fees. That's why they are there. Mm -hmm. But I think we need a more professional in okay. terms of uh, counseling our students, letting them know exactly where they stand at the end of every semester or at the end of every term. That okay. is our responsibility. Grateful to you for joining us here. Now, two other stories now. She went viral after an interview with Joy News' Maxwell Agbaba at the Occupy Julobi House protest three weeks ago. Nasiba Bao, an activist, spoke personally about Ghana's ineffective healthcare system. 48 hours 
after the protest. She was sacked by private employers. Nasiba says that although she does not want to draw a direct link between the protest and her termination, she believes there is always a price to pay for speaking out. Maxwell Agbaba has more in this report. It is the 23rd of September, the last day of a three-day protest against what organizers of the Occupy Jinobi House demonstration say it's corruption, mismanagement of the economy and unemployment. One of the protesters, Nasiba Bawa, is charging at the police. She later explained she was angry because a 24-year-old man died as a result of Ghana's ineffective healthcare system. A teacher, his father is a teacher, gave over 30 years of his life to the service, could not afford just plants, could not afford dialysis, 400 cities a week. What do you mean? Do you know how much taxes they check out every day? The cost of living. We just had my hand up. <laughs> It is lunch time and I'm here at a restaurant in West Ligon to meet Nasiba. Her contract was terminated by a private employer 48 hours after the protest. She says she doesn't want to draw a direct link between the protest and her termination but believes there's always a price to pay for speaking out. I, I, I've worked there yeah. and I do know it to be partisan and that's why I am trying not to I keep saying that I, I don't want that connection because yeah. um, if I if I knew that the company was partisan, mm. then maybe I can say that because it's partisan, it's yeah. fair enough to come towards to or to pin the story. But I don't know it's the partisan, yeah. and I wasn't told that was the reason. Yeah. And another but, thing is I wasn't rebuked for going to the protest, even though my video went viral. Okay. I was not rebuked for it. Okay. So you get that. So it's like a plain white sheet. So it's okay. really hard to say that it's because of this, it's because of that, or maybe okay. I was rebuked. When I got to work on Monday, I was rebuked. Or they sort of questioned me, or the, a comment was passed that made me look like, mm, we are not okay. No, okay. if it's because of it, Fair enough, there's always a price to pay for everything. My uncle will tell me that you went to a protest and there is a price to pay for everything. And this that's is your price. Told you. And that's okay. You know, Wait, your uncle said what? My, you know, my uncle says that there is a price to pay for everything. Okay. Yes, they, they said, like I said, they said yeah. they had. Um, you were sick, you took days off um, with permission. Okay, so let me read that part of the tweet. And they had you, you said, they said when I was sick and took days off with permission, they hired someone to replace me. That was three weeks ago. Why abruptly ending it now? The math is not math. Eh? Yeah. So you took sick leave three weeks ago. No, you returned yes, I took actually. Some days off, you, you took some yeah. days of sick leave and then returned. And yeah. I've been working for the past three weeks before the protest. Yes. And then 48 hours after the protest, you come back to work. Then you're told that, um, you remember the sick leave you took three weeks ago whilst you were away? We got another person and the person is going to start work in October. I think that for me, I didn't pay much. I mean, when I even tried to think about it, I also tried to think about the company because yeah. I've also heard where people have been let go for like health purposes because the company feels like we can't really rely on you. The only reason why I was thinking was, oh, when I came, why did, why was I not told that this was what was happening, and um, so that I could, you know, sort of ready myself. Yeah. You know, if that was what it was, you know. But also, people don't owe me. I just want to say that, like, I, I, I'm trying to, I understand, or I'm attempting to understand all the parties involved, and just understand that, or maybe that's not it, it's something else. She says she's not worried, and will continue to fight for a better healthcare system. Last week, Nasiba was part of the panelists for the Joy News event on the dialysis crisis. As she said, the country continues to fail its citizens. And the only thing that stands between you and death is dialysis, and you cannot even access it. And we had the Kolebu CEO, why they cannot even open it to open the cases. You know, and, and that's what stands in between you and death. So you are just dying not because um, your body is failing you, but because your country is failing you. And that shouldn't even be. Labor expert Senior Ejabin says Nasiba's employers erred in terminating her contract. There are grounds for termination employment under our labor laws. And therefore, 
if the termination of payment is not in accordance with those grounds, then of course there are legal remedies for which an employee can can go to any adjudication any adjudication process to get um, some justice. You will have to to present a defense, I mean, an argument, properly so, that proving that one, you had a, a, a contract of employment that was active and that it was terminated either in breach of the contract of employment, the labor law, or your rights under the 1992 constitution. So it, it is very, we would need to go into the circumstances a lot more to know exactly what uh, she can do. But yes, if she was terminated on the basis that she signed off with permission and came back and she was replaced, then of course that does not constitute a ground under the labor law that has a big legal action. All right. Now, um, when we told that story, many of you have been sharing your thoughts on X. So let's start from Great Sage. He says, a young lady expressing her democratic rights peacefully loses her job. Yet that political party guy at Coco Board who stormed UTV in an act of hooliganism will maintain his job. Make it m make sense. Okay. That's what Farouk Suraj uh, tweeted. Okay. Let's uh, share with you more of that. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, Farouk Suraj says she took a leave of absence from work, ostensibly to visit the hospital, but instead she attended a protest. Consequently, she resorted to deception, which ultimately led to her, to, led to her termination. Uh, so that's what Farouk Suraj is also tweeted. Now, Professor Khalifa says, I pray that anywhere this lady is, God will provide her one of the best and biggest companies in the world to work with. Yes, of course, everything has a price. And so will she get a very good prize for the good work she did. Thank you. That's Prof. Khalifa there. All right. So, so those are some of the tweets that some of you uh, uh, shared on X. We'll take a break. We'll return with Showbiz. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Let's do showbiz. And today the showbiz is really showbizum <laughs> with the lady Faustina. So yeah, hi, give Faustina. it to me. Give uh -oh, it to me. Oh, you're looking <laughs> sweet, huh? Thank you, darling. Damn. I know, oh, right? Oh, that, that is My director beautiful. was like, you're looking dashing today. I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the news, yeah, before okay. I become the news. Mm -hmm. So, you know, seven years ago, Miss Bell was heavy campaigning for the National Democratic Congress mm -hmm. and it was a big deal for her. She even released a song for mm -hmm. the then presidential mm -hmm. candidate for the NDC, Mahama. Yeah. And unfortunately, that didn't turn out right for her because the MPP won the elections mm -hmm. at the end. And mm -hmm. so she's been chronicling how sad it's been for her throughout the journey since she revealed her political colors. Listen. I supported my, my party, mm -hmm. but, you know, and it was my first time. I didn't... Oh, really? Yes, yeah, it was my first time coming out to say mm -hmm. this and that, like, you know. But I didn't ask... I didn't consult anybody about how it's done, and if it's okay the way I'm doing it. I just went all out. Anything, I just went all out. And people misunderstood me once again. And I, I believe some choices of words I used to were you not know, appropriate in that space. So I had a lot of backlash, a lot of hate. I lost a lot of businesses, a lot of friends. Hey. Chief political affiliation. Oh, yes. So this time around, I'm trying to be very careful. I still love my party. I will still support my party, but... You're not going to come out of the no, new campaign? No, no, no. More campaign for Miss Bell. No, no, no. Now, Sami, I'm sure that you've had a lot of stories. Being who you are, mm. I know how far you've come. Mm. And so for one young budding musician, mm. Yao Darling, he's been chronicling some crazy things he had to do just to become a musician. Oh. Yeah. In oh. fact, he says, 
at, when he discovered that he had the passion for singing, mm -hmm. he knew that Lucky Mensa then was a big shot. So mm -hmm. he decided, actually, I have to meet this guy. Okay. And so his brother decided to do the, you know, link uh -huh. in for him. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. Though. Mm. His brother took him all the way to the city, only to take him to <laughs> Lucky Mensa's wife shop. <laughs> Wash plates. <laughs> well, let's listen to it's him. The brother of this man, the man who sang Lucky Mensa. Oh, okay. Come back, come, come, back, come, come back to me. Yes. So his wife was, you know, he, she used to prepare food at the roadside. So we go there and we wash the bowls. Yeah, so that the man will bring me to Lucky Mensa. So I watched the bowl for like three months. Yeah, I said, no. <laughs> and the this I just meet another man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So, that's, Charlie, that's an experience, huh? and you know, <laughs> so for you, share with me your story. I'm sure it's it's very um, craziest I, thing you've ever done. No, I mean, to achieve it, your dream. Okay, okay, this is not crazy. Is, is it crazy to do? I mean, like him, I used to wash bowls to get food to eat. Me and my brother, my grandmother would give us money to go and buy food, but we'll go and wash the bowls of some woman. And anytime I go back to Agora, I go and look for her because she did that great then. Yeah, that's it. Touching story. Uh, 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 and that's how, I mean, we wrap up. But before we go, life has come to a standstill in the Ago Bledoki community in the Alok constituency of the Volta region. The spillage of Kosombo Dam has flooded the entire community, putting their lives on hold. For so many members of this community, they have grown tired of having to deal with the devastation every year. We'll bring you that in our subsequent bulletins. Uh, but uh, there's more on my joy online. My name is Samuel Kojobro. He's up next. It's Prime Business with Beverly Brooks.